Life Audio. Hello. Thank you for listening to Your Daily Bible Verse, the podcast that examines one verse each day to learn more about God and His will for our lives. I'm your host, Kyle Norman. After a brief message from one of our sponsors, we will read today's Bible verse. Y'all, we all got weaknesses. It's okay. Just acknowledge what those weaknesses are and be willing to confront them. Even when restoration doesn't work, forgiveness always does. Chris, how did you overcome the whole passive husband thing? I let him through it. (laughs) (laughs) There is work for us to do. It is not just sit back and cross my arms and just kind of wait for God to drop the miracle. Hey, y'all, it's Dana Shea. For real faith-based marriage advice, be sure to tune into Real Relationship Talk on lifeaudio.com or wherever you get your podcasts. Cycling isn't just cycling. It can be cycling or cycling or even cycling. Peloton isn't just one thing. We have classes that will ease you in and classes that will make you sweat and a range of instructors so you can find your match. Whatever you're in the mood for, we can get you in the zone. See for yourself with a worry-free 30-day home trial. Visit onepeloton.com slash home dash trial. Terms apply. Today's verse can be found in Philippians chapter 3, verse 8. I regard everything as loss because of the surpassing value of knowing Christ Jesus my Lord. For his sake, I have suffered the loss of all things, and I regard them as rubbish in order that I might gain Christ. My son is currently in his last year of high school. He spends much of his time looking for jobs. Every weekend, he searches the vacancies and he submits his applications. During this process, he naturally tinkers with his resume. After all, a resume is designed to show why we are the best fit for the job at hand. We put our best foot forward. We describe our skills, our knowledge, and our abilities. The aim is to convey how we tick the boxes that the company or the employer is looking for in their new hire. In Philippians chapter 3, Paul puts forward his spiritual credentials, his spiritual resume, if you will. He lists all the qualification that merits his righteousness before God according to Jewish law. He was circumcised on the eighth day. He was from the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew of Hebrews, he says. Regarding the law, he was a Pharisee. As for zeal, Paul persecuted the church. And as for legalistic righteousness, Paul says, I was faultless. From a Jewish standpoint, everything that Paul mentions is extremely important. What Paul is saying is that he ticked more religious and spiritual boxes than anybody else. He had more qualifications, more credentials to his name than anyone. What are the spiritual boxes that we try to tick? What are the religious credentials that we try to garner for ourselves because we believe that they amount to spiritual righteousness? What do we look to for our spiritual accolades? Is it that we are a member of a large church or that we are a large donor to that church? Is it ministry? I'm a pastor. I'm a priest. I'm an elder. I'm a bishop. Do we believe that these things bring us closer to God? Does Jesus love us more if we wear a robe in the church than if we do not? Or if we are a pastor of a bigger church than somebody else, does that mean that we are more blessed than they are? Our spiritual resume, as good as it might be, doesn't cut it. Being a pastor or a priest doesn't matter if we don't know Jesus. How much we donate to the church doesn't add any spiritual credits to our name, and it matters little the amount of time that we spend in the sanctuary if we don't have an inward and abiding relationship with our Lord. And so now, standing from the point of faith in Jesus Christ, Paul looks back at his spiritual resume And he says, I regard everything as loss 
because of the surpassing value of knowing Christ Jesus, my Lord. Paul dismantles a spiritual life which is based simply on a list of religious or spiritual qualifications, a type of faith system that is concerned only with ticking the religious boxes. Because ticking religious or spiritual boxes will only get us so far. This type of spiritual living is all a loss when placed alongside the more important reality of knowing Jesus Christ in our lives. In fact, Paul goes so far to say that every religious accolade he could garner for himself was but rubbish compared to simply knowing Jesus. Now, our English translations don't do this justice. See, Paul doesn't use the word for refuse or garbage. The Greek word he uses is skubala, which means cow dung. Now, what common phrase today can we substitute for cow dung? Paul literally says that basing our spiritual life on anything other than a relationship with Jesus is complete and utter bull. Now, importantly, knowledge of Jesus isn't simply about memorizing certain information about him. When Paul says he wants to know Christ, he wasn't saying that he wanted to learn the answers to trivia questions. Who was Jesus' mother? Where was Jesus born? How did Jesus die? If that's all it is, then this is just another spiritual box that we get to tick. No, Paul doesn't want to know about Jesus. He wants to know him. He wants to experience the inward presence of Jesus in his life. Knowing Jesus means allowing Jesus to influence our lives as we follow where he leads. See, padding our spiritual resume is easy and safe because it means that we are in control. We control our experiences and how we handle those experiences. And the more we prove ourselves competent, the higher up the spiritual ladder we get to climb. But as we climb that spiritual ladder of accolades and recognition, our eye is only turned upon ourselves. There can be little relationship with our Lord when we are only concerned with our spiritual success and how other people are seeing us. Dismantling our spiritual resume means we recognize the surpassing greatness, the supreme value, of an inward connection with Jesus. Do you strive to know Jesus in your life? Not just to know about him, but to know him. Do you strive to live with him each day? More than anything else, this amounts to our spiritual livelihood. This brings us all the spiritual richness we long for, and it opens the door for countless experiences of grace, mercy, forgiveness, and love. So put down your resume and turn to the one who calls you to himself. Your Daily Bible Verse is a production of Life Audio and Salem Media. If you liked what you heard today, please take a second to rate and review this podcast in your favorite podcast app so that more listeners like you can find the show. For more faith-filled, inspirational podcasts, visit us at lifeaudio.com. Hi, this is Gail from Navy Federal Credit Union. How can I help you? Hey, Gail. I'm looking for a credit card that's good for a busy lifestyle. I've got the hookup. You can earn three times the points on dining and two times on fuel with our Go Rewards card. I-Y-K-Y-K. Do you mean if you know you know? Is that what that means? We totally get it. Finance, that is. Learn more at NavyFederal.org. Navy Federal Credit Union. Our members are the mission. Insured by NCUA.